Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of our series on sharks to celebrate Shark Week. You can check out Shark Week all week on Discovery Channel. It's awesome. This is going to be great, because today we're going to talk about some crazy stuff about sharks. And I do mean crazy, like really awesome, interesting stuff that you might have heard about, but you probably don't know how it works. Trust me, this is going to be great. Make sure you subscribe for all the episodes of D News Plus this week. If you've never tuned into D News Plus before, hey, welcome. How's it going? I'm Trace, and every week we break down a big science topic so everybody understands it a little bit better, myself included. And I'm sure that you know we're doing sharks because I've already mentioned it three or four times, but make sure you watch the first episode so you get the history of sharks. Today we're talking about biology. My favorite thing about sharks, though, was learning about their senses. Because like us, sharks have sight, they have taste, they got smell, they got hearing, they can feel things, but unlike us, they have electroreception, which I've never really understood how it worked until I sat down to do the research for this episode. Sharks can detect electrical waves in the water. They can do that because to move muscles, you got to generate electricity. So they can detect the smallest movements of animals in the ocean, like some sort of sharky superhero. Has there ever been like a shark man? You know, like a comic book hero shark man? Like... Producer Brian looked this up, actually, we were talking about this, because, you know, there's, like, Tiger Shark, an ex-Olympic swimmer, has the power of a shark, meaning they swim really fast, can breathe underwater, has sharp teeth, but no electrical sensors, Tiger Shark. I don't care how fast you can swim. Drop the ball on that one, Morville. There's also the DC villain, King Shark. It's a humanoid shark, no electrical powers, though. Let me know in the comments if there are other shark villains and heroes that I missed. But for now, we're just going to make up a new superhero. We're going to call this superhero Shark Man or Shark Woman. It'll be equal. So anyway, back to sharks. So sharks' ability to track electric currents, it's actually in part because they live in salt water. Seawater, unlike air, is conductive. It contains sodium and chlorine ions that can transport electric currents. So sharks can sense that electric current down to one billionth of a volt. So low. And they do that with this stuff called ampullae of Lorenzini. It's open pores on a shark's face. They're little black dots. There are 1,500 or more of them spread across the front of the shark. And they're filled with a jelly that can conduct electricity. So the electricity comes to those little pores. The little pores have that jelly in them so the electricity can enter from the water and then that triggers little hair-like cells called cilia. Once that cilia is triggered, the shark's brain is triggered too, that something is alive and kind of that way. So they can hone in on their prey just using the electricity that it takes for that prey to try and escape. Another sense that you're probably familiar with is their sense of smell. They have really, really great senses of smell. They also smell in stereo, which would be weird. I mean, we hear in stereo, right? Imagine if you smelled in stereo. That'd be really cool. So they know which direction that smell came from. And yeah, sharks can detect small amounts of blood. This is something they're famous for. Uh, one part per million for many sharks, which is like a teaspoon of blood in a swimming pool. And some other sharks, the more sensitive ones, can do one part per 10 billion so one molecule of blood for every 10 billion molecules of anything else, and that's one drop of blood in a swimming pool. They have very sensitive senses of smell. Shark snouts have two nares, which are like nostrils. Picture a shark, you can probably picture them on there. And each has two openings, one for water to go in and one for water to go out. If Shark Man had that exactly, it might be a little weird. I don't think Shark Man or Shark Woman would walk away with a romantic love interest if they had nares that water was flowing in and out of. Not to mention jelly-filled pores spread across their face. But we're not making attractive superheroes, we're making great superheroes. So it takes water in and it goes into nasal sacs over something called an olfactory lamellae. It's an olfactory system filled with sensitive neurons and nerve cells that runs directly into the shark's brain because smell is a huge part of the shark's ability to find prey. So two thirds of its brain are dedicated to dealing with that smell in some sharks. As for touch, they have something called the lateral line system. It's a set of tubes that run down the shark's body. Water gets into that tubes through pores, and the tubes are lined with little hair-like things, and they're connected to sensory cells called neuromasts. 
So when there's movement in the water around the shark, ripples are sent out, which go toward the pores and tell the shark which way their prey is. They can feel water moving because water doesn't compress. So if I go like this under the water, the shark would be able to feel it way over there. This is all incredible, right? This is all just crazy stuff. If there was a superhero that had all these powers, dang, awesome. I would read about that superhero in a book of animated frames. Even after all that, sharks are way more than just senses, right? You wanna talk about shark penises? Of course you do. They actually don't have them. So anyway, male sharks don't really have a penis. They have two penis-like appendages or as one website put it, dual sperm-releasing tubes jutting from the pelvic fin. This is all caused by a gene called Sonic Hedgehog. Not a joke, that is real. The SHH gene, it's named after Sonic the Hedgehog. The real, yes, that one, the blue one. Scientists studied male skate embryos and found that the gene SHH helps appendage development, including limbs, spinal cords, and brains and it stays about a month longer in males than it does in females. And when that happens, the sharks create these dual sperm-releasing tubes, which are called claspers. They tested this by activating the SHH gene in females, and they also grew claspers, or you know, dual penis-like tubes. The weird thing is scientists don't know why they have the dual penises because there's not really a good evolutionary reason that we could determine. Sharks raise in skates, they only use one penis during mating, and so the female shark needs just one of them. So why do you need two? We don't really know. But the males aren't the only ones with the weird sexual organs. The female shark can also hold and store sperm inside of her body after mating. If the timing isn't right for fertilization, the shark can just choose to keep the sperm in there for like a month. Just holds it there. It's like two more weird superpowers for shark man and shark woman, I have to say. Kind of odd. And once the mating has happened, the baby making is crazy too. So let's say that the shark female needed the sperm, it was time for fertilization. Well, there are three ways baby sharks are born depending on the species. Viviparity, which is a shark embryo that grows inside the mother. It has a placenta. It's born alive, similar to humans and, and mammals. Oviviparity, or oviviparity, which doesn't have a placenta. There's an egg inside of the mother shark. It hatches inside of the mother shark, and then the baby shark gets nutrients from what is left of the egg inside of the mother shark. Or, because lady sharks can get around sometimes, there might be sperm from various shark baby daddies that created multiple baby sharks inside of the same female. When that happens, then baby sharks get to munching on them other babies. That's right, baby cannibal sharks inside of the mama shark. They aren't even outside in the world yet and they're already killing other sharks. It's, it's crazy, look it up, it's crazy, look it up, it's crazy. Female tiger sharks uh, have this happen. They fight for survival inside of there. And bigger sharks eat smaller ones inside of the mom's body. Some sharks also will lay eggs outside of the body, more like an egg case, actually. They'll attach eggs to rocks or wedge it in somewhere. And then once it's ready, it hatches. Uh, fun fact, these shark sacks are called mermaid purses, which sounds real gross. I don't know why, but it definitely does. In case you're not done with shark facts, we got, we, I got lots more here in my notes. Not all sharks kill with their bite. The thresher shark was observed attacking prey with its tail. This is a superhero power that shark man and shark woman definitely need. In 2010, researchers saw a thresher shark speeding towards some sardines. Then they pitched its head down and then it used its tail like this whipping trebuchet thing like in pumpkin chunkin' and just whoosh. They recorded speeds of around 30 miles an hour. It obliterated the fish, and the shark just swims around. Clean up, clean up crew. Super power for sharkmen, super neat. Sharkmen's here. Sharks don't have vocal cords, actually, so I don't think sharkmen would ever be able to say sharkmen's here. It'd be like a mute superhero, which would be kind of sad. Uh, but they also don't have eyelids. They don't blink. Uh, instead, they just use that as protection. Some sharks don't have that ability. They have this membrane that covers the eye, kind of creepy. And others just roll their eyes back into their heads 
I'm not really sure if this is a great superpower. Not good for- I feel like Sharkman and Sharkwoman not great with the social skills. This is a thought. Let us know if you want to participate in this fantasy that we've created and tell us Sharkman's and Sharkwoman's origin stories down in the comments and feel free if you want to draw some fan art. Well, I'll tweet it out. I absolutely will. You can come find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. You can find the show at DNews. You can also tune into Discovery Channel for more Shark Week stuff all week this week because it's Shark Week and it's awesome. Sharks! Sharkman's here. He's going to cut you with his tail and eat you.